and welcome to part 3. So to start off with I'm going to format this 8 gigabyte uh, drive that I've got here, flash drive, um, and I'm going to put FreeDOS on it, just make it into a FreeDOS bootable USB drive. So we we'll just quickly format this by setting up the uh, radio buttons and that's finished. I'll just test it by running QEMU And there we are, and I can do a directory and run it. Okay, now let's install Grub for DOS on this drive. I'll only take no user prompts just be, just to show you the uh, choices that you get when you click install Grub for DOS. So this is asking me if I want to put it on the master boot record or the partition boot record. Um, I'll put it on the master boot record. It's the one I use the most often, and it's uh, it's most it's the easiest thing to uh, to handle. So let's now try and test this uh, USB drive and see what we get. And there we are, we booted to the QEMU menu. Now it's showing a Grub for DOS menu because in the uh, default download with, that comes with RM Prep USB, I also include a, menu, include a menu.lst file. And this menu.lst file has a timeout, which you saw just ran there. Um, and it's booted to uh, the uh, FreeDOS files on the USB drive, but notice it's booted as drive A, not drive C. Uh, if I run this again now, I'll click no user prompts just to make things faster and run uh, QEMU again. And now if I choose boot FreeDOS as hard disk, it's booted it as, as drive C. Okay, to have a look at the menu.lst file that's on this uh, drive, I'll just press F4 in our prep USB. So make sure our prep USB is highlighted and press F4. So this is the menu.lst file which is included with the FreeDOS files. And you can see how it's made up uh, the, uh, the USB drive. So we've got a timeout there of 20 seconds. We've got some colors defined for the menu. Uh, we've got a bit of code there which writes to the, the heading on the um, in the menu, and then we've got our menu entries here. Now I'm not going to go into the commands on here because uh, they're probably a bit more complicated than uh, than we need. Um, so at this stage, what I want to do now is copy over all of these files onto my USB drive, and then uh, so I just select them here and select copy. Now if I press uh, F2 on here it will open Explorer. So this is our USB drive and I'll paste the files into there. I'll go into each one of these individually in just a second but the first thing I want to do is I've got a, I've got a bitmap here and I'd like to get that bitmap as the background for this um, menu system that I've already got. So let's bring up the menu.lst file. I'll just hit F4. So that's our menu.lst file. And I'd like to put that uh, image up there. So the way that you normally do this is with a splash image statement. So, so that's what we need to do. So I'll save it and just quit that and then emulate and see what we get. And as you can see, it hasn't worked. Now, why hasn't that worked? Because the splash image just should automatically find the um, resolution of the bitmap and set the, the correct graphics mode for the bitmap. Well, let's have a look at the bitmap. So we get rid of that and we'll just look at properties on there. That's better. We'll look at details. And we can see it's 640 by 450. So it's not 480. So that's why it's not working. So what we need to do is force the 640 by 480 graphics mode and the bit color depth here is 24 so we need to force 640 by 480 by 24 so let's do that in the menu list get rid of that press F4 again so before we load that graphics file um, we should do a graphics mode statement so we'll do graphics mode Six forty. Well, we choose 
minus 1 means uh, choose the best mode that you can. 640 by 480 by 24. So let's save that and see what happens now. And there we go, we've got the bitmap. But you see, now we're in graphics mode, this text is not coming out correctly. Um, and uh, the colours look a bit funny. So just for the sake of clarity, I'll edit that menu and get rid of those entries so that we've got a, a clearer menu. So I'll get rid of the colour entries because I don't want those. I'll leave the timeout in. Um, it sets the default menu entries too, so it default the, the third entry will be highlighted when you run grub for dos um, You can comment out lines using any, pretty much any character, but I use, I use hash. Uh, that writes the heading over. Um, for just for the sake of clarity, I'm going get, to get rid of that. You can, if you look on the website, you'll see how to do that. And here are some uh, titles. These are some menu entries. I'm going to get rid of uh, all of these. Um, you can edit them and leave them in and do whatever you like. So there's our, our basic menu.lst file. And I'd like to change the colors on here. So what I'll do is I'll cut and paste in um, a, uh, some entries. Uh, and we need a few menu entries in here now. All the grub for DOS menu entries start with title. So an easy one, a useful one, is reboot. So I'll put in reboot, and the command is reboot. Another, another one, useful one is uh, to reload the menu. This allows me to edit the menu and then reload it. I'll show you how I do that in just a second. So the command for that is config file and the name of the file that you want to load, which is menu.lst. So let's just try that. I'll save that and reboot, and I'll just uh, show you how that works. Get rid of the menu. And there we go. So I've got white text. I've got a uh, light blue background for the highlighted and a dark blue text in the middle. You can easily change these these colours to be whatever you prefer. And if I click on reboot, it'll reboot, load the menu.lst file, and give us that menu. So now let's try adding some of the files which I want to add. They're already on the USB drive, so I just need to have the right menu entries. Well, Okay, so uh, I mentioned I would show you how to get to the Grub console. So you see under here, it's giving you a clue, a clue about hitting some uh, the up and down arrows, which you can move up and down through the menu. You can also use left and right arrows, left and right. Uh, you can also press Enter to execute the menu, or B to boot from the menu. Uh, but it also says you can press E to edit the commands before booting, or C for a command line. So if I press E on this command, it allows us to edit that. So, for instance, uh, I could add a command in. So if I press uh, E again to edit that line, this is our edit line, so I could say echo hello, the echo command will echo anything you, you put after it, and and, so the, the next command after that, if that's successful, can be pause, and and, reboot. If I hit enter, it'll take us back to that menu, and this is the line, there's only one line in that menu, so it's displaying that line. And if I hit enter again, or press B to boot, it'll run that command. So it's got hello, it's stopped, it's waiting for me to press a key, and now it should reboot at the end of it. And there we go. And the other thing that you can do, apart from editing the menus live, now that the edit that I've made, of course, is, is that's not actually um, change the menu.lst file, let's only change the menu in memory, so if I edit it again you'll see it's gone back, it's reloaded the menu.lst file. The other thing we could do is go to the command console and to do that you just press C. So there's our command console and there is help available, so if you type help you'll get help and you can see there's lots of commands there and if you want to know about the particular command um, then you can just type the command help chain loader for instance. Um, you've also got ls to look at the uh, files on the drive, so there's ls there. 
and you've got uh, tab auto completion. So if I sh if I type ls check and then tab uh, sorry slash check and because I've put slash it's it knows it's look, got to look at the drive and it'll complete the uh, the string so ls check pci will list check pci so what i want to do first of all i've still got a uh, free dos on here and the the boot partition is still um it's still a free dos boot partition so i should be able to boot free dos from this usb drive and if i use the chain loader command and the boot drive the drive you boot from if it's booted as a hard disk will always be hd0 and the partition, the first partition is numbered as 0, so it goes from 0, 1, 2, 3. So the first partition is always going to be 0, unlike Linux, which I think uses 1 instead of 0. And what I want to do is um, I want to boot that boot sector, which is in the first partition of this drive. So if you type plus 1, plus 1 is a special notation. Uh, it usually means um, the first sector in that um, in that uh, partition, although sometimes it can mean the whole device, it depends on your, your usage. In this case it just means the first sector. So if I hit enter now, you don't get any um, anything back, but uh, it, will, it should have loaded that uh, sector into the buffer. Now to actually boot from the code that we've just loaded into the buffer, just type boot. And there we are. So let's go back to the command console again. And the other thing I want to run is the uh, the DOS boot image. So let's uh, see if it's on there. There it is. OK, so I'd like to be able to boot that floppy image as well. Now this is a floppy image. Um, it's a, it should be a 1.44 megabyte floppy. So again, let's map that. OK, but we'd like to boot to that. Um, now we could just use chain loader uh, to boot from FD0 plus 1. Uh, but the other thing we could do is boot directly from the file. If we, if we load the partition boot record of that uh, floppy disk image, um, then it will simply load um, the uh, io.sys. And we've got io.sys there. See, there it is. So what we can actually do is just load io.sys instead. And it's told us it's going to boot to DOS. It's recognized it that io.sys is the, is the DOS bootloader. Now if we type boot, and there we are. We've booted to the floppy drive. It's booted as drive A for MS-DOS. So I'll just quickly go back to the uh, load up the menu again in, uh, in here. So up here, I'll press F4. And I'll add in those menu entries. Now you can see the first entry here, we've just got the title and then the commands. And we need to say map that to FD0, hook it, set the root, and run io.sys. The second one I've used if title. Um, if title rather than title uh, has a check. So if you include in the square brackets a command, and if the command is true, if the, if the result of that is true, then this menu will be listed in the menu for, in, the, in the menu presented to the user. If this is not true, then it won't. So in this case, if it exists slash memtest.img, uh, then um, it will list this menu. If I just delete memtest.img from the USB drive, then the whole menu, this, this whole entry, will not be listed. It will not appear. So it's a rather nice way of being able to manage your files on your um, USB drive. You can simply, once you've made the menu, you can add and remove files if there's not enough room for all of them. So let's just try this now.